Mrs. Gaddy and the Ghost by Wilson Gage, illustrated by Marilyn Hafner. Pictures by Marilyn Hafner. Published by Mulberry Books, New York. For Libby with Affection, thanks, WG. For Ab Abigail and Douglas with Love, MH. Mrs. Gaddy was a farmer. She had a little old house and a big old barn. She had some fields of corn and a vegetable garden. She had a meadow and some apple trees. She had a storm cellar to go in if a tornado happened. She had some chickens. She had a cow and a mule. It was a very nice farm. There was only one trouble. The little old house was haunted. There was a ghost in the kitchen. It made awful noises at night. Mrs. Gaddy did not like it. She worked very hard. She needed lots of sleep. The ghost kept her awake. She could not think of any way to get rid of that ghost. Thump, thump, thump. One night, Mrs. Gaddy was sleeping. Suddenly, there was a loud noise. Thump, thump, thump. Mrs. Gaddy woke up. Drat, she said. There is that ghost again. Something must be done. Yes, said the cat. Mrs. Gaddy jumped out of bed. She lighted her candle and she went downstairs. She went in the kitchen and looked all around. Come out, she yelled, she called. I know you're here. I heard you thump. There was a ghosty looking thing high up in the corner of the kitchen. Mrs. Gaddy got her broom and swept it down. She opened the back door and swept the ghosty thing outside. There, she said, that takes care of that. And she went back to bed. But a few nights later, she heard another noise. Drat and double drat, cried Mrs. Gaddy. That ghost has come back. She took her candle and went downstairs. Now it's in the chimney, she said, and she got some bug spray. She sprayed and sprayed up the chimney. There, she said, that ought to get rid of it, and she went back to bed. But two nights later, she heard another noise. Clank, clank, clank. Oh, my stars, she yelled. The ghost has got in the oven. Mrs. Gaddy ran downstairs. I'll fix it now, she said. She got a lot of wood and built a fire in the stove. Then she sat down to wait. She wanted to be sure the ghost was really cooked. What a nice hot fire, she said. I should make some bread. Miss Gaddy went to the pantry. There was her fresh bread rising in the pans. She forgot about the ghost. She brought the pans from the pantry, opened the door, oven door, poof! Out sprang the ghost. <laughs> oh, tarnation, Mrs. Gaddy shouted. I have let that ghost out. And what am I going doing baking bread in the middle of the night? She put the pants back in the pantry and went upstairs to bed. The next night, she heard another awful noise. Clump, clump, clump. Mrs. Gaddy jumped out of bed and ran to the kitchen. She held up her candle. She thought she saw something ghostly under the table. She took off her slipper and slapped the ghosty thing. Dang, I missed it, she said. She slapped something ghosty under her rocking chair. Missed again, said Mrs. Gaddy. She slapped all around the kitchen. I will never hit that ghosty thing, she said. It's too hard to see. Suddenly, something ghosty jumped in the churn. Bless my soul, Mrs. Gaddy cried. I have the ghost. I have that ghost now. Quick as a flash, she put the lid on the churn. She fastened the lid down. Good, said Mrs. Gaddy. 
I will never get out. It will never get out of that churn. And she went back to bed. The next day, Mrs. Caddy got up and she fed her chickens and she fed her mule, the mule. I must make my butter, said Mrs. Caddy. She got a pan of cream. And, oh, my stars and garters, she hollered. That ghost is in my churn. I need butter. I will have to let the ghost out. Oh, no. Mrs. Gaddy took off the churn, lit off the churn, and looked inside. There was nothing there. Good gravy, she cried. The ghost has got itself out all by itself. Miss Gaddy was really mad. She poured the cream in the churn and began to churn it. I wish that ghost was still in there, she said. I would churn it into bits. I would make butter out of it to feed my hens. Suddenly, she had an idea. I will set a trap for it, she said. I will set a mouse trap. I will use gingerbread for bait. Everybody likes gingerbread. That night, Mrs. Gaddy set her mouse trap very carefully. She used gingerbread for bait. Then she went to bed. She slept all night. There were no scary noises. Next morning, Mrs. Gaddy was very happy. Oh, I have caught that ghost, she said. She went downstairs. The trap had been sprung. The gingerbread was gone, but there was nothing in the trap. The ghost has got away again, she yelled. Whatever shall I do? Mrs. Gaddy thought and thought. I could spread glue all over everything, she said. The glue would surely catch the ghost, but bless my big toe, it would catch me too. That would never do, she thought some more. I could move away, she said. Oh, I would not like that. I have lived here a long time. I love my little house and my big old barn. I would miss my apple trees and my chickens and my cow. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Mrs. Gaddy was very upset. She still had all her work to do. She went out to the barn to take care of her animals. The barn was very tidy. There was no rats or mice. Mrs. Gaddy had an idea. Maybe I can get rid of the ghost the way my grandmother taught me to get rid of rats and mice. She cried, I will try it. Miss Gaddy ran back into her house. She got her pen and some ink and some paper and she wrote a letter. It was a very polite letter. Dear ghost, please go away and haunt some other house. There are many nice houses in the neighborhood. Respectfully, Mrs. Hilda Gaddy. That night, she put the letter on the kitchen table. That ghost will be sure to see it there, she said. Then she went to bed and fell fast asleep. But something waked her in the night. Strange sounds were coming from the kitchen. Oh, good gravy, she said. That ghost is crying. What sad sounds? Why is it crying like that? Miss Caddy thought a minute. Oh, forevermore. What have I done? She asked herself. That ghost has lived here longer than I have. It feels just the way I do. It loves this little house. It does not want to leave. I, it wants to stay right here in its own home. Mrs. Gaddy jumped out of bed and ran downstairs. Don't cry, ghost, she called. You don't have to leave. I will tear up the letter. Tomorrow I will go to town and buy some earmuffs. I will wear them when I go to bed. Then I won't hear all that thumping and clanking the ghost sniffled and snuffled. There, there, said Mrs. Gaddy. I mean it. You can stay. Mrs. Gaddy tore up the letter and threw it in the stove. Then she went back to bed. The ghost was very quiet. Next day, Mrs. Gaddy went to town. That night, when she went to bed, she put on the ear enough muffs. She could not hear a thing. Late in the night, Mrs. Gaddy woke up. Still, she did not hear a thing. She tossed and turned. She counted sheep. She couldn't get back to sleep. Finally, she sat up and she took off the earmuffs. She could hear noises in the kitchen. Thump, thump, thump. What a nice noise, said Miss Gaddy. A ghost in the kitchen is very good company. Wait a minute. Huh, he's doing all the cleaning. Tomorrow I will bake some gingerbread for it, and now I believe I can go back to sleep. And she did. Uh, 
Wilson Gage, the end, that's the end of the story. Wilson Gage is the pen name of Mary Q. Steele, who has written many popular books for children. As Wilson Gage is the author of Squash Pie and Down in the Boondocks, both ALA notable books, under her own name, she is the author of Journey Outside, a Newbery Honor book, as well as many other books, including The Owl's Kiss, The True Men, The First of the Penguins, and Because of the Sand, which is there. Born and raised in Tennessee, Mrs. Steele lives there today in Signal Mountain with her husband, William O. Steele, who is also a writer. Marilyn Hafner studied at Marilyn Hafner, who's the illustrator, studied at Pratt Institute and the School of Visual Arts in New York City in her early career, did advertising, illustration, and fabric design. She continues to do editorial illustrations for leading magazines and illustrated many distinguished books, including Mind Your Manners by Peggy Parrish, It's Halloween by Jack per Perlusky, Camp Kiwi's Secret Weapon, and Jenny and the Tennis Nut by Janice, Janet Schulman, and The Mango Tooth by Charlotte Pomerantz. Ms. Hafner lives in Cambridge, Massachusetts. The end.